Today we are going to talk about the application of uh, ferrocement, uh, especially to a case study building at AIT. But before going into that project, uh, let's look at the history of ferrocement briefly. In fact, this uh, product uh, is sometimes called as the beginning of the, the reinforced and pre-stressed concrete. Uh, one person in France in 1850s uh, kind of invented and patented the idea that we can take the metal mesh and on the metal mesh we can put some plaster and create free forms. And this was a great idea because you don't need a form work. And this uh, quickly was becoming popular in France where people started to use this to especially create boats or even flower pots and other things which they thought that could easily be made by into in any shape, any flexible shape. And in fact, for a long time, the primary application of this material had been in the building of the boats. Later, in 1940s, uh, an Italian uh, engineer who is quite famous for his innovations, Nervi, uh, he said that we could to use this on a larger scale. And then he promoted the development of air cement into larger structures. In the meantime, most of the navies around the world had started uh, ferro cement to build boats and even small ships, especially during the World War when the materials were not sufficient. And in 1976, a specially designated center for ferro cement was set up at AIT called the International Ferro Cement Center. And more research was carried out, and a lot of people joined that. And 1991, that center also became the house for the International Ferro Cement Society, which is still very active. This video basically shows how in AIT, once again, we have used this technology to build a whole new building extension on top of an existing building. And that actually became our offices and our smart lab. As I was saying, this, this particular project is very personal to all of us at AIT especially me, because I joined, rejoined AIT um, after my graduation in 1993, just about the time that the International Ferro Cement Center was established there under Professor Palmer, who was one of my professors. And I learned a lot from him uh, regarding pre-stressed concrete and later worked with Lilia Astriaco. And I had the honor of meeting uh, Professor Naman also. So this particular uh, building that we are going to talk about is actually an extension of uh, one of the centers that we established at AIT, which is called AIT Solutions, uh, which is primarily is like a, a consulting firm within AIT utilizing the research and development at the Institute. So if you go back to the plan, so this building, as you can see from this plan, is roughly eight and a half meter wide and about 24 meters long. And there are three divisions in there. And for this eight meter, eight and a half meter span, if we had constructed in traditional concrete slab, obviously the weight will be very large. We would have to have to use large beams and thick slab. But with using this shell form, we were able to reduce that thickness uh, to just about 40, 35 to 30 to 40 millimeter. And we decided to put in the rib cage, rib ribs as a cage uh, to further stabilize it and increase the stiffness of the structure. And we, obviously being an AIT and a part of the AIT solutions, we decided to do a full finite element analysis of the structure and carry out the full uh, stress analysis and do the design using all of the techniques available to us. Uh, also be making it as one of our projects in the finite element analysis as well as ferro cement design. So we went ahead and we created this model in SAP 2000 and we determine the model properties as you can see here and the mode shapes to make sure that we don't have any local modes developing too early or the, the building has sufficient stiffness in terms of its stability. Although it's a shell structure, we have stiffened it by using the ribs uh, also made from ferro cement and we decided to do that to basically increase the stiffness of the vertical walls which otherwise might, might not be stiff enough if we only made them 30 millimeter thickness. So we decided to put these ribs around the doors, around the openings and carry them all the way. And uh, in fact, our initial analysis without the ribs, the structure would have worked, but the construction would have been difficult uh, because the cage would not be stable. So these ribs provided us a way, as a way to make a stable cage on which the, the plaster could be applied. And these, we have some of the construction videos of that time where you can see the cage being made and then applied the plaster on it 
And once again, I would like to mention that most of this was done by the staff within AIT who were experienced in during the, the center that was established here. So some of them are still working here. So we asked them to come and help us making this structure. Even though it was given out to a contractor, but we, we still asked them to use our own lab technicians to do this. And some of the students also got involved in understanding how ferrous cement is actually designed and constructed. So let me go over the process of construction of this project uh, through a few slides and through pictures and also we have some videos that we can show. So the first thing of course we did was to create it, the framework uh, for using the steel rebars and the cage um, and especially using the ribs that uh, were primarily used to stif stiffen the structure during construction as well as after construction to avoid the, the full form work of, for the whole roof. So we didn't need the false work uh, that to support the roof. So in this one, we first applied mortar after attaching the mesh, obviously, we first applied the mortar to the wall and also to the ribs at the same time uh, for the lower portion. And then later we applied the mortar to the ribs on the roof to provide the, the stiffness that we need so that we don't have to provide a false work to support the entire roof uh, casting. And then apply the mortar and to prevent it from falling down during the application on the flatter portion, we attach temporary uh, plywood panels uh, just in each panel, but these panels were supported directly on the on the ribs rather than needing to support uh, from the ground. So that uh, and these were reused by panel by panel. So we didn't have to apply the formwork for the entire roof, but they were just used while one panel was being plastered, and this prevented the sort of uh, spillage of the plaster and also gave the, the the workers the ability to smoothen the plaster while they are being while they were applying it. And once that is complete, then this is how the full structure looked like. As I was mentioning, it gave us the ability to plan, uh, analyze, design, construct, and also do a monitoring through drone. So we, we used several technologies during this, this project. So this is almost now seven, eight years ago that we, we made this. And any uh, ferro cement project, the, the primary outcomes that we got from this was the lightweight construction, and then the adaptability and integration of the existing building with the new technologies as well as the ability to, to integrate the entire process within our office because it was like, like our own project that we planned, designed, executed and used. So it's one of those projects we were entirely involved in the whole facility and not make something for an external client. So we can see the ability and the strength and versatility of the ferro cement through this application as a case study. I think we continue, everybody who comes to AIT, it's a visible structure due to its form. Uh, the shell form is very nice. It is, it's a contrast to the rest of the building, which is use the steel crosses and it has a hip form. So it uh, as architecturally and aesthetically, it also looks nice.